was taking packages upstairs when the bomb went off. She was barely breathing when they put her on the bus. What's her name? Emerson, Lori Emerson. Lori Emerson. What's it look like? Funny pieces of a pipe bomb. Oh. More of that? Looks like it's from an alarm clock. It's old school, huh? I'm gonna need a list of the tenants and all the security camera footage from the lobby and the street, right? The other guard went to the hospital with the victim. Yeah, from what I hear, he could end up being our only living witness. Ugh, yoga classes, prenatal. Two victims now. She's out of surgery, but she's had a massive stroke. She went into a coma, we're seeing minimal brain activity. Any chance of recovery? Maybe 5%. What about the baby? Stable. The fetus should be okay as long as Miss Emerson's on life support. She's in post-op with her husband. The money's been tight, so Lori was trying to get in some OT before going on maternity. Oh, God, baby. Look, we're really sorry. The other security guard, you said he had a tough time reaching you. I couldn't hear my phone. Oh, you're in a bar, that's yeah. why. Joe, you don't smell start. the booze. I'm here. You're out drinking. My brother's here now. Huh? Don't you use that tone with my wife. Stop. The three of us go outside. Come on. Lori's been staying at her mother's the last couple of weeks. It's the kid, you know? I mean, money. Me and Dean have a contracting business. Uh, things have been slow. Hmm. So you couldn't stay in the same house and work it out? Was Lori afraid of you? I would never lay a hand on her. Was he abusive? Well, no, he never actually hit her, but... All that arguing, I told her it wasn't healthy for the baby. So moving out was your idea? Ryan's wasting his time working with that brother of his. He's about to be a father with the young son on the way. It's time for him to get serious. It was supposed to be a wake-up call. We got to hit off the phone dumps. There was a call to Hudson University from Dean's apartment. He have a history of anti-gay violence or activism? No, nothing's turned up. But he just happened to send a bomb to someone who worked in the same building as his sister-in-law. Dean's call to the university about Hoffman and Genetech might have been a smokescreen to hide the real target. Lori and her husband were having problems. Ryan looks like a cut-and-run type. He might have been looking for a cheap way out of the marriage. And he got his brother to do the heavy lifting. But we don't have anything on Ryan. The call came from Dean's apartment. So, start there. Place is clean. You okay, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Just this bum ticker. I'll be fine as soon as you guys clear out. Do you take pills for your heart? Yeah, I take pills. Can I see him? Please. Yeah. This is a three-month supply. You got it two weeks ago. So where's the rest of them? How the hell do I know? Nitroglycerin. No different than the nitro in the bomb. Put the nail gun down, Dean. Put it down! What's going on? Stay back. You're under arrest for attempted murder. Mr. Emerson is a business owner. He's the caretaker of his elderly father, whose heart medication he stole to make his bomb. Did he now? Points for creativity, Mr. Emerson. Fails 500,000. Hey, don't worry, I'll get the money. I'll get the money. You better find that money quick. You don't want your brother rolling on you when we offer him a deal. You think he can scare us? Forget it. You ain't gonna let them get away with this, are you? Ryan and his brother? No, we'll do our best. Lori never liked that, Dean. 
Why is that, Mr. Drucker? A leech. Bloodsucker. Living off his brother Ryan's hard work, living off his dad. Honey, Ms. Rubrosi here wants to know about the message from Lori's supervisor. Now, when did you give Lori the message she had to work that night? Let me think now. It was just after 5.30. I finally reached her on her cell phone. 5.30? You sure that sounds too late for her to get to work on time? She said it was no problem since she was already upstairs in the building. In the building where she worked? What was she doing there on her day off? She said she was at a doctor's office. Her obstetrician? No. Another doctor. Uh, Dr. Hoffman. I don't know what she was seeing him for. I told Lori I needed a DNA sample from Dean. A swab from his mouth, nothing invasive. She called him from my office to ask him. And what, if anything, did you hear of her conversation? She gave him my name. She told him she was participating in a research study. She started arguing with him. She called him paranoid. After she hung up, she told me Dean refused to supply a DNA sample. Thank you, doctor. Doctor. You've received death threats in the past, haven't you? Yes, two years ago, from a religious zealot. How about now, since the news broke about your work on identifying the gay gene in fetuses? Any death threats? Many, from the gay community this time. They liked me well enough when I found a genetic basis for their behavior, but now... Are they upset now because your work might lead to a screening test? I, I don't know about that. Isn't that the patent you applied for? A screening test to identify this gay gene in unborn babies? Yes. So while you're making millions off this patent, the gay community is worried that your test might ignite what they've termed a gay holocaust. Objection, relevance. Withdrawn. Doctor, in light of the highly provocative nature of your research, are you aware if the police investigated any suspects besides my client in connection with the bombing? No, I'm not aware of it. As far as the threats, I think most people understand that science seeks only one thing, the truth. I don't have any political axe to grind here. Doctor, isn't it true that your findings have been rejected by every scientific journal you've submitted them to? That's only three journals. I have successfully screened for the marker in utero. That's why I asked Dean for a DNA sample. Lori Emerson's child carries the marker for homosexuality. That's according to your standards. No further questions. Not sure what to make of this. The defense just added an alibi witness. David Drucker, Lori's father. It's real simple. The day you say Dean was planning that bomb, he was at our house in Long Island, fixing a leak in our powder room. He even stayed for dinner. Strange that Dean never contacted you to provide an alibi. Dean and I don't always see eye to eye on things, but maybe he thought I, I wouldn't stand up for him. But he's family. Excuse me. I'll have you know, I had to skip Pilates to get here this early. Do I have to guess, or is this about? Have a seat, please. In case you're wondering where your alibi witness is, Mr. Drucker is at the hospital with his wife attending to their daughter. She's in obstetrics ICU being prepped for a procedure two hours from now. What kind of procedure? Did you really think? Mr. Drucker's helpful testimony wasn't coming at a price? Did you think that homophobe would do you a favor? He's doing it because it's the right thing for our family. Then why don't you tell your brother what procedure Laurie's undergoing this morning? The procedure you approved. Ryan. Ryan, tell me what you did. He's having Laurie's pregnancy terminated. He's aborting your nephew. Your nephew with the gay gene. That's the price of Drucker's alibi. It's not why. It's Lori, man. If, if I keep the baby, she's got almost no chance of coming back. You're sacrificing your son for the slimmest hope. Ryan, don't, don't do it. Stop it. I'll put you in prison forever. Forget about the kid. Dean, why is it so easy for him to dispose of his son? 
You know, don't you?